We're now going to look at joining our uh, front card slots that we've done, uh, sorry, rear card slots and the money pocket to our lining panel. Now, if you've got the, if you're doing the curved top, so the curved flap, make sure that you're attaching this to the bottom half, so not the bit with the flap. So I've basically laid um, my money slot and my rear card slots right side up on top of my lining panel and I've made sure that the sides and the bottom match perfectly. Now I'm going to stitch along the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm just going to change my foot. Um, again, starting three eighths of an inch in from the outside edge and finishing three eighths of an inch in from the other edge. So let's just turn that round slightly so you can see me. And again, I'm just going to back stitch one back stitch at the beginning and the end just to secure my stitching. You must make sure that all of the sides are completely matched. And this will be exactly the same regardless of if you're doing the uh, Brady or the No Braider. So I'm just stitching along the bottom edge to secure the, the money slot and the card slots to my lining panel. One back stitch at the beginning and the end just to secure my threads and get rid of any threads that I've got left over so you can see that that's now attached at the bottom. So I'm just going to take my exterior panel and I'm going to make a few markings on both of these panels. So let's just find my ruler. Right, here's my ruler. So on this panel, so the one with the um, cards that's already attached, I'm going to do make a line, make a mark that is half an inch down from the top edge of my rear card slots. So it will actually be level with, with the bottom curve on these card slots. So the line will go across here and across here. I'm gonna lay that right side up on my table. And I'm then going to just make a couple of marks on this one too. So I need to make a mark on this end where we've got the, the cutouts. That is, let me just double check my measurements. Two and three quarter inches away from this top curved edge. So. It's actually quite difficult with that um, snap there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a mark on one side, that's in the right place. And then I'm going to mark the other side, two and three quarter inches. That's not sitting very flat, so that's not ideal. Then I can do it from below where that uh, snap is. So I've now got that line that goes two and three quarter inches away from this top corner. And then I'm gonna make marks that are two and a half inch in from either side. Again, it goes centrally, the lines go centrally to these um, sort of little bits at the top here. straight Christine do that one again so 
So I'm going to lay my lining panel with that on with the uh, money slot and card slots already attached onto my table. And I'm going to take the second part of my, my exterior part and I'm going to lay that over the top, matching the top of those curvy bits with that half inch line that we drew. Now I'm not going to clip the whole thing together. I'm going to lift up those card slots and I'm going to clip along the sides of the card slots only. So I'm not clipping the lining in place. I'm just clipping the card slots. So you can see there that the card slots are separate from the lining and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that lining panel away so that it's out of the way and now I'm going to stitch from the two and three quarter inch mark up to the top and that should all line up it actually isn't lined up very well should line up with the previous a um, little bit of stitching that you did. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to make sure I've got long threads, top and bottom. I'm going to start at that two and three quarter inch mark. through all of the layers so the three layers of faux leather and this is the thickest part of the wallet to the top long threads and the reason I do this from the bottom is because if there's any stretch in my faux leather it will pull it upwards and you won't get puckers my self-threading needle to take those threads from the front to the back of my work and I'm going to tie them off. So you don't get any double stitches or thick threads because I'm going through that last hole or the first hole that I've stitched. Turn your work over. threads I'm just going to secure those threads with a little bit of 
glue stick. Now, if you're using glue stick, make sure that you don't um, immediately close that because if you do, then this will be stuck to the lining, which you don't want. So you can just leave that to dry and everything will be hunky-dory. Once you've left it to dry, I'm not going to, you can open that up again and you can remove that line across the bottom because you don't need any of those markings now. So I'm using my sleeve, which is my standard removal of markers, marker type thing. And then I'm going to fold that in half so that my exterior fabric meets my lining fabric. And I'm going to match up all of the sides. And I'm just going to line them up and match all of the sides. Now, if you feel that you want to, and I like to do this, is just pop a little bit of glue stick just around the outside. You could use Fabri-Tac, it's not a big drama. It just helps to keep everything in place. So matching up all of the edges very, very carefully and clipping to make sure that they are absolutely perfectly matched. Now, if you've done um, a no braider, you won't have, this has got several layers in the side here, um, and you won't have all of those layers in the side because you will have taken the bulk out of the sides by shaping those um, card slot pieces and the money slot piece. I'm gonna braid this one so it's fine to have those layers. as many clips as you feel that you need around the outsides just to make sure that they sit perfectly together. forget you can manipulate this to a certain extent so if there's a little bit that looks like it's a millimeter out just stretch it it will stretch quite easily just pull it into place and make sure that everything is where it needs to be and you can leave that until your glue is dried if you've chosen to use glue going to do a no braider make sure that you've got the same thread in the bobbin as you have in the top of your machine and starting at one corner you can now stitch all the way around the exterior of your wallet and you can do that at um, well I usually do just less than quarter of an inch um, 
and then I'll do another line that's an eighth of an inch away from the outside because I don't like any flappy bits. Um, but you can see how we're kind of coming together now. Um, but I'm going to leave that glue to dry and I'll come back and show you how we'll have a look at braids. Let's just pop another clip in there just to hold that in place. Um, because there are lots of different options for braiding. Um, I've done them with ribbon, I've done them with braiding, I've done them with um, fine thread that you, or not fine thread, um, thinner thread that you use for jewellery making. I've done it with thicker um, braid that you can use, leather braids and such, such like. So each one is slightly different. I'm just going to clip along that bottom as well just to hold that in place. So I'll come back to you shortly and show you how we get on with the braiding. But we just want to leave that until that glue is all dry and everything is as it should be. Now, if you don't want to use glue, and I sometimes don't, then don't. Um, it depends how confident you feel having everything close together. Um, a little bit of glue inside does make it safer for you. I've got a bit of thread there that's going to annoy me. Um, does make it safer. It means it doesn't move as you stitch. Um, less likely to stretch out a shape. So... Um, glue is definitely worth using and I'm just using a standard glue stick. <laughs> 